Okay, this is Wayne in Cave Creek, and I am bringing to you another little project that I've been working on. Pardon me for being tied to my notes. I can't remember all the stuff I want to say today. Basically, it's a 12 volt generator to use to either charge up deep cycle batteries or to run an inverter for the house if I needed to. In other words, it's kind of like a poor man's emergency generator. Uh, one of the reasons I uh, have put it together rather than buy it is the fact that the parts that are available are available commonly in the United States and is modular. So if parts of it break down, you would be able to get replacement parts with little effort. What I'm using is a TIFF mower, and you'll see in the videos that I refer to it as a till motor. I don't mean to, uh, it's just my mistake. But it was a TIFF mower. I got it for around $50. However, if you wait long enough, you'll probably find one on Craigslist or eBay for next to nothing. In point of fact, an individual I know, about a month after I got this thing, offered me a mower of his for nothing. It had a bad gas tank, which is not that difficult to take care of if you're mechanically inclined. However, I bought this one. One of the reasons I went for a TIFF mower, as you will see, is that it's kind of a semi-self-propelled push mower and so the way it's set up, you could easily push it around rather than picking up and dragging it all over the place. You'll see what I mean. The alternator I got was from the epicenter.com. They're good people. They sell alternators there for these kinds of projects. In fact, they also sell adapter plates for different kinds of generator setups, as you'll see. I highly recommend you go to their website and take a look at them. One of the other reasons I went with it is that the V-belt or serpentine belt pulley won't work in a project like this. You have to have an A-type industrial pulley. The tip mower came with one on its uh, output shaft, its crankshaft. So <clears throat> to have them go ahead and install it, it was free as far as the installation was concerned. The alternator itself ran me around $60. Some people say that's a little expensive, but considering it was a remanufactured unit, it's warranted, and it came with the A-type industrial pulley, it was a bargain for me as far as I was concerned. Almost all the parts you're going to see are original parts from the mower itself, I, except for the uh, the brackets that you'll see that mount the alternator, and the uh, obviously the alternator itself, and the wiring. Other than that, uh, after I stripped the mower down, I used the parts that I stripped off, and were able to utilize them in some fashion to be able to facilitate this uh, project. Um, one thing I'll mention is that the brackets that I made for the alternator, there are little L brackets I cut out of the bed frame. Now, I'm probably going to let a little secret out here, but as you, if you do a lot of projects, you know that steel is crazy expensive. It's only going up further. Uh, L type steel or angle iron is very expensive. A four foot section from Home Depot, as of this point right now, is over $20. Uh, I get bed frames. I get a king size bed frame or I got a couple of twin size bed frames, two of them for about 20 bucks. And for that you get probably around anywhere between 60 to 120 dollars worth of steel depending on the quality of the steel, where you're getting your steel, that sort of thing. So I highly recommend if you see them on Craigslist to pick them up. Sometimes at garage sales I've picked up whole bed frames for about five bucks and I just store them on my property for future projects. You wouldn't believe how useful they are so I highly recommend you do that. One thing I'll mention about the performance, it's a 2.2 horsepower motor, as you'll see. Um, one quart of fuel will run in about an hour, uh, charging up batteries. Uh, one thing I'll mention here, too, is that <clears throat> as far as modifications to the motor itself, you don't want to mess around with taking the governor off or anything like that. Uh, when you go to use something like this, it will bog down quite a bit when you got a flat battery. That's normal. Um, if you take the governor off to try and get higher RPMs, all you'll do is that when the batteries are done charging and you're not around, the thing will over rev. So I recommend just leaving that part alone. Uh, you'll see in the end that I made a little shelf for the front of it, part of it to keep the front part from rattling around too much, but I also fi figured I'd put a battery there or maybe some tools. Um, if I did it again, I probably would have done it a little differently, you'll see. Uh, the reason being is that when you put tools there with the engine running, it's vibrating so violently, really. Uh, they rattle so bad, it just makes it a whole lot more noisier than they really have to be. Okay, so the requirements for this. I wanted a generator that wasn't like what you got by a Costco, where you just plug in a 110 volt 
appliances and such to it. I wanted a 12 volt generator, this particular one is a 65 amp alternator, for two reasons. One, I wanted to be able to charge deep cycle batteries. A friend of mine, when I was camping one time, when my batteries went flat, we went and plugged in his 110 volt generator, in, or started it, excuse me, and then plugged in a battery charger and then plugged that onto my battery. So basically you were taking a generator head, <coughs> excuse me, generator head producing 12 volts, bumping it up to 120-ish, going to a battery charger, knocking it back down to 12, and then into my batteries. It's kind of convoluted, but besides that, you get a lot of loss. So what I wanted was something like that where I could either charge up D-cycle batteries or hook up an alton, or excuse me, an inverter to it. Uh, that way, if I had a blackout situation uh, with a suicide cord, which I won't discuss for legal reasons, you could power your house with it. That's a whole other subject. I won't get into that. The parts had to be easily obtainable. The engine is a Briggs & Stratton. It's an American-made tip mower. And the alternator is a GM, like an SI-10, I believe, or something like that. The uh, thing of it is, if the alternator went bad, I could just get an alternator. If the engine went bad, I could just get an engine. If it was something I bought off of Harbor Freight or Craigslist or something like that, where a generator head went south and it was some foreign make, then basically I have a really expensive, cumbersome boat anchor, and that's not what I wanted. So I want to be able to um, be able to repair it with parts that are easily obtainable. Like I say, it uses an industrial type uh, drive belt system, um, which are called 4Ls or A-type belts. Uh, the original one that was on there, as you'll see, was a little short. So on eBay, I picked up for like seven bucks one that was a little bit longer, which got it away from the engine where I could check the oil and things like that. Um, so they're 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 pretty easy to get a hold of. Uh, okay, and I uh, guess that's about it. You'll see it uh, running at the very end video. Um, I have I put a belt guard on there because I figured if somebody fell on it, the uh, dog got too close, whatever, um, whatever it would be, would get sucked into the pulley system and uh, hurt or worse. Uh, any individual or animal I got too close to it, so I highly recommend you do that. So you'll see in this series of videos here and pictures uh, exactly what I did. I'll tell you this, that I uh, took a deep cycle and dragged it down to uh, less than 50% on its uh, its capacity and uh, set it up, turned it on, and uh, it charged it in less than an hour. It's a 65 amp alternator, so you figure that you're talking about 65 amp hours. So that's not too bad. Uh, two 100 amp hour batteries pulled down, which is 100 amp hours. Uh, it took a little bit longer than that. But overall, I was very pleased with it. You'll see that I used the original throttle, and there's a switch I installed for the exciter on the alternator. That way, at least you could get it started, especially when it's cold, let it warm up, flip that switch, get the fuel energized, and then it'll go from there. So I hope you enjoy it. If you have any uh, questions or anything like that, I'll include my email at the end of the video. And uh, feel free to ask me about it. And uh, enjoy. Okay, this could be the platform for my generator project. This is one of those till mowers. And I'm in the process of stripping it down. I elected for this configuration because finding mowers in Arizona is very difficult. Uh, this particular one, uh, the engine runs really well, and uh, it's a bit worn, but it does pretty good. And it gives me a horizontal motor that's mounted the way it is, and when I get done stripping all the hardware off, I'll have a platform that I can mount all my equipment to, plus I'll have wheels and a handle to be able to push it around so I don't have to worry about picking it up and throwing my back out. So I'm going to go ahead and start stripping the blades off and all that and then uh, get down to the bare basics so I can go ahead and start building up the uh, generator from there. Okay folks, this is the parts I've stripped off last night. Most of it has to do with the cutting mechanism and the front uh, axle for the wheels and some of the drive. All these parts are going to be saved because you never know when you might need a chain and sprocket, specifically shaped piece of iron or metal all of it could be useful. So it's going to go on the uh, scrap heap for future research, shall we say. 
Okay, and this is the stripped down uh, TIFF motor. And you can see to the uh, left, the wheel there, there's a C clamp with a large counterweight on it. Without the machinery in the front, the thing wants to tip over backwards. So hopefully I won't need a counterweight when I'm done, but you never know. So for now, anyway, it keeps it in a working uh, orientation. So basically, all the jack shafts and belts, drives, things like that are all removed. So you just basically have the engine, the frame, the wheels, that sort of thing. And from here, this platform is what we're going to build the uh, generator on. Okay, here's a little update. As you can see below the alternator, I got mounting brackets. One's drilled and mounted, and the other one's I'm getting set to uh, line it up and uh, mark it so I can put a hole in that. You can see the drive belt that's sitting there. It's an old belt that needs to be replaced, but it's good for aligning everything. So you want to get everything lined up. One thing I suggest doing is once you get your uh, brackets measured up, is to move them slightly apart from one another. And that way, if you have to make a final adjustment fore and aft on the alternator, you can shim it with washers. And that way, if you make a slight mistake, you won't be eating up belts because that way you can move it uh, back and forth slightly to adjust for the angle. Okay, the alternator is mounted. So my L brackets are in. And at this point, I just need to find myself a new belt and do some more wiring, and that'll come. And uh, anyway, we're well along our way at this point. Uh, one thing I'll mention here is that the L brackets are made out of an old bed frame. The steel is forged, it's heavy uh, gauge steel, and it's very stiff, and it works great for projects like this. If you see bed frame rails at uh, yard sales, pick them up. Steel is so expensive that if you were to buy a comparable uh, L shaped steel like this at Home Depot or Lowe's, you would pay $20 for even just four feet of the stuff where you can get, like I did, um, six feet of the stuff, two times uh, six feet 12. And uh, it cost me five bucks. And I think I overpaid, but still, they're very much worth having uh, to uh, keep in your scrap pile for projects such as this. Okay, I have the new belt on, and as you can see, the linkage here, these are all parts from the machine that I stripped off and I'm reusing. This piece here was a piece that I cut and ground down to attach this push rod to, which was the disengagement bar. Here's the turnbuckle adjustment, and that's where it attaches. There's a uh, a key holding that on, and it keeps tension on the alternator. So now what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to end up doing the wiring on it, and eventually going to put a bracket down here for battery or tools or anything else. And uh, when you go to start these things you have to have a switch that cuts the field or the exciter out. And we're going to install that as well. Okay, here's some of the wiring that's done. As you can see, I used lugs you get at Home Depot. Get these in the electric department. Those guys there, there's two of them. This white wire is 6 gauge THHN. And there are 3 eighths connectors. Basically I strip the wire back, slip them in, and take a hammer and, and pound them flat. And there's wiring up to the switch now to energize the exciter. And uh, I can't wait to uh, try it out, so I'm going to go ahead and hook up a dead battery to it and see how it does. Okay, this is the finished product. It has been running about five days, so we'll do a cold start here and you get an idea. You definitely want to have the alternator exciter hooked up to a switch. That switch is located right here. Because if you try to start it with the uh, thing energized, you'll be pushing against it and you won't get it going. So once it's good and warmed up, you flip that switch and the energizer comes on and it starts making power for you. 
Here's the belt guard I fabricated out of expanded steel. I bought that at Home Depot. It cost me about $20. It's criminal, but that's the way it is these days. And uh, <clears throat> as I take you around here, this rod here was probably the disconnect rod for the drive system. This part down here, same thing. And come around here. You'll see this in other pictures though, but wiring connections, Home Depot, they're just lugs. You'll see them there. And of course the wiring and such. Um, and the shelf. The shelf is supported by, again, pieces of bed frame. And of course I'm using the original throttle. And what we'll do here is go ahead and start her up. And you'll uh, get an idea just how uh, it vibrates, shakes, and runs. Overall, I'm very pleased with the whole thing. I would do it again. Um, it was a fun little project, and I've already gotten some use out of it.